Hello, welcome to another Kerbal Space Program video, and welcome to a uh, start of a brand new series here on the channel. As uh, some of you may know, a few videos ago I launched a poll. It is uh, on two videos, I believe. It is on the Strata Launching a Strata Launch video, and part two of the Duna Base, or the Duna, yeah, it's the, yeah, part two Duna Base and the poll is present and I invited you guys to vote on a new series to do on the channel. The options were a Minmus colonization, a Tylo base, or Artemis, and, or recreating Project Artemis. And with 25 votes in, and 15 of them being for Artemis, six of them being for Minmus, and four of them being for Tylo, Artemis has won, so we are going to be recreating Project Artemis in KSP. If you don't know what Project Artemis is, it is NASA's plan to get humans back to the moon in year 2024 and set up a permanent human presence on the moon at that time, as well as a station or a space station in lunar orbit. So all that is going to be fun stuff, and they're also developing the SLS rocket, which is what uh, you guys are looking at right now, which is a launch vehicle that we're using to get our very first payload to the MUN, which is going to be the International Habitation Module. Because for part one of the series, we are going to be building the Gateway Station, which is that space station I talked about. That is in uh, lunar orbit, or it'll be in the MUN's orbit, because we are not in the real solar system, KSP, you know. Uh, this is going to be five launches in total. There are seven modules, so two of them are going to be doubling up. Or two of the launches are going to have double payloads, because uh, some of those payloads are really, really tiny. So just going to go ahead and do our ejection burden now. And uh, I'll go ahead and preview the series for you guys. So uh, Project Artemis has many parts, as I explained. Basically, there's the station. There is the SLS rocket, the Orion Command Module, the base on the moon. And there are the three different landers. And those three landers are Dynetics. Um, all these land, all the two of the three landers are collaboration projects. So Dynetics makes one of them mainly, and there are other people. I know Blue Origin contributes to another one, and then there's also a uh, Starship. So we're going to be getting all three of those guys out there and uh, landed on Zimun, and then we will also get a base set up, likely with the help of Starship, <laughs> and then uh, also bring some Kerbals out eventually, and then everyone will have a jolly old time. Uh, but step one, which is today's video, is establishing the base, or the space station base, which makes no sense. The space base, I should call it the space base. So, uh, what we are doing now is circularizing around the Mun. Uh, if, you, uh, if you were uh, looking very intently, uh, it takes a very, very interesting, very keen eye to notice this. Um, orbit that we're in is just slightly different than a circular orbit. I know it's a little subtle, but uh, yeah, all jokes aside, uh, this is what is known as a halo orbit or a non not non rectang rectin rectilinear halo orbit. Non rectilinear halo orbit. That's what it's called. Um, uh, if you want more information about it, Everyday Astronaut has a great video uh, detailing differences between Apollo and the Artemis program in which he goes into very deep detail as to uh, the Artemis program. So uh, basically the way this orbit works is it is a polar orbit around the MUN, or the, you know, well in our case the MUN, with it, it's also highly elliptical so the periapse is very low and the apoapse is very 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 high relative to the periapse. And basically the purpose of the orbit is to ensure that the space station is in constant communication with Earth at all time. So it never passes behind the MUN. Now unfortunately in KSP, um, MUN sphere of influence is not big enough for an orbit like that to be possible. So we're just going to try and replicate it to the best of our ability and we're just going to get, we're going to basically go on a highly eccentric polar orbit around the MUN uh, to kind of replicate it, but uh, like I said, the Mun sphere of influence is not big enough. Another thing you we do is the ascent profile is also a little bit different. Uh, if you notice, the there's also a, a elliptical orbit. We get into a 400 by 100 kilometer orbit using SLS. I will uh, talk in a little more detail about the uh, launch process uh, during the next launch. Uh, but uh, for this uh, 
time, I want to talk about our next payload, which I believe is the multi-purpose module and the habitation, the U.S. habitation module. Uh, this is one of our double payload missions. The multi-purpose module is made by Rosco, Roscos, Roscosmos. Sorry, I had to look down and see who made that. And that is basically uh, where all the uh, craft will dock to the station. And then there also is uh, the U.S. Habitation Module, which is uh, similar to the International Habitation Module. It's just slightly smaller and made by NASA instead of the other Habitation Module is made by ESA and I believe the Japanese Space Agency. Don't quote me on that, though. Uh, and if you don't know what the ESA is, it's the European Space Agency. So uh, we're just going ahead and docking there up to it and you can uh, see the uh, payloads kind of hard to difference between the two payloads the u.s habitation module kind of starts where that silver fairing is uh, that's meant to be more I, I believe that's like an airlock possibly don't quote me on that either now i'm just going to go ahead and do our very first docking very intense and awesome of the space station so we'll actually have a space station now because it's more than one part um, docking was a major challenge with this station. A lot of things were. I'll, I'll talk about that, all that crap in the next launch or the next few launches because I have a lot I want to talk about uh, because it was it was not fun. Also, Halo, the Halo orbit is a very complicated orbit in real life. It's less complicated in KSP because it you know literally isn't possible. So I could uh, I might I might talk a little bit about that because. For you to not go behind the moon, it is very, very complicated. Uh, but uh, right now I want to talk about our next launch, which I believe we are, is uh, another one of the, it's the other uh, doubling payload. It is the E-Spirit module. And uh, no, it is the US utilization module, sorry. And the logistics and resupply module. So um, before that, I want to talk about our launch. So basically we have those two strap-on SRB's Clydesdales that uh, we drop just over a minute into the launch and then we are going to use this core stage which has a mammoth and that is going to take us all the way up to our app apps which is going to be we're going to just going to set our app apps at that stage of 400 kilometers and then we are going to actually do our orbital insertion burn with our next stage which has a poodle well or which is analogous to the rl10 engine in real life uh, so we're going to use that to circularize or not circularize get into orbit actually uh, the reason that they do this highly eccentric orbit, or not highly, but you know, decently eccentric orbit, uh, is just basically because the core stage has uh, enough. To, it, they do it because the core stage is essentially doing part of their translunar injection burn by raising the apoaps. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our periaps and then raise our apoaps this up to uh, Mun's height. So basically, the core stage just helps out a little bit with the uh, the burn to encounter the Mun. And then the uh, RL-10 stage will do the rest of, it, rest of it, that is known as the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, uh, is the fancy dancy name they gave it on the SLS. I, I just call it the Poodle stage, or the second stage, or the upper stage, or whatever name you choose to call it. So we're just doing that, and now I might take the opportunity to talk about the challenge of getting into the orbit that I have for the station. It is a polar orbit, but it is a like a weird polar orbit. So as you can see, we have to do our orbital insertion burn around the Mun at a really weird time. That is partly to do with my failures in setting up the orbit, uh, which I will correct for the next videos because we're gonna have to dock to the station five more, probably seven more times at a minimum. So I'm gonna just make sure that it's in a better orbit for the next videos. But for this one, uh, it's in a close enough orbit that uh, it works because uh, we have the Delta V to do it. It doesn't really take that much to do. Correction burns around the Mun. So now we're going to go and do docking and the docking is also particularly challenging because while this is the Mun and the Mun is small, this is a very, very long orbit. This orbit is over five hours long in Kerbal time, which is very long, which means orbital, because the orbital period is so long, it means docking is a lot more challenging Granted, the speeds you're dealing with is a lot slower, but I mean, even on a place like, I don't know if you guys have ever docked, I assume some of you have. It's, uh, I don't have, I'm not really sure how many players can actually dock. Probably more than I, probably a lot. Um, maybe, I don't know. 
Uh, but basically, you know, if you're docking on Kerbin, your relative speeds are pretty quick and it's a little bit harder to get a close encounter just because how long the orbit is. With the Mun, it is a much, much, much longer, like orbital periods around Kerbin are about 35 minutes, maybe a little less. This one, like I said, is five hours, so it's a lot trickier to get an encounter. But the relative speeds are usually only 10 meters a second because it's a very slow orbit. When you're moving, when you're at AFWAPS, you're going like 100 meters a second. It is not quick. Uh, so I think even a little less than that. So that that's easier, but it's it it's generally a pretty challenging docking to do. Uh, but you know, because the speed is so low, you generally can get you can generally work with really distant encounters or in distant target or distant separations and then just make it work. So it's harder and easier in some situations. All right, so we just went ahead and docked the US utilization module, which as you can guess is made by NASA. And now we are docking the logistics and resupply module, which is made by NASA and the JXA, which I think is a J Japanese space agency. Let me know if I'm wrong, which I probably am. So we're just trying to get uh, the solar panels deployed for uh, the resupply or the yeah the logistics uh, resupply module. Uh, the the uh, spacecraft or the space station has two sets of solar panels. These are the smaller ones, and the bigger ones will be launched on the last launch. But that is not what we're doing right now. Right now we are launching the E Spirit module, which is made by the European Space Agency, and is what I believe to be. Uh, the communication module, but I'm not 100% sure. It's kind of weird looking, which you guys will see in a few moments' time. All right, so uh, as you can see, with a lot of these launches, I've done really steep launches just because you can, and I think they look cooler when the time lapse. Uh, and the, the, the rocket also has a really high TWR. Like, if those, and you can, yeah, there's the E-Spirit. It's all yellow and weird. Uh, but, like, if those tanks are not filled up, by the way, uh, in the SLS, those orange tanks. They're like a third, a third full. Because we could get like, if I filled, and the SRBs are like a third full too. Like we would get like to Duna <laughs> and back probably if I filled it all the way up. We'd get probably to farther than Duna and back, honestly, if we filled it up. And when I lower, when I drained all the, half the tanks, First of all, the SRBs would just burn out in like 20 seconds, which was kind of weird. And our TWR was like eight. It was nuts. We were getting like five Gs off the launch pad. It was ridiculous. So I also have the thrust limiters really low on them. So that is just that was just an interesting little anecdote. <laughs> but even so, like we get, but right when the SRBs detach, we are getting like three and a half Gs of acceleration, which is pro, you know, which might be not great. Um, in terms of structural stress, like when I, the way I do the uh, launch, I launch and then at two kilometers, I reduce the thrust on the mammoth to one third and we still get like over three Gs of acceleration when we detach the boosters in which when the boosters go, I throttle back up. It is nuts how much thrust those boosters have even at like one third thrust limiting. It is nuts and it's craziness, but hey, these payloads are really light and I mean, Maybe they're launched with different rockets than the SLS, but you know it's all speculative at this point. And for all we know, they'll just use Starship for everything. So uh, I'm just going to all all using SLS, and this is the Block One B version of SLS uh, because the Block One version is just a crew, and Block One B uh, is cargo variant. So uh, what we're going to do now is get the E Spirit module docked up to the station. I kind of talked through all the docking. You guys generally get how it goes. I screw it up, and then. I don't talk about it because I screwed it up. <laughs> but I mean, hey, it's work. It's working right now, so we should be good. That's coming together, and uh, at this point is when I decide that there is no reason to have one of the stages still attached. Like, you can see that RL-10 stage just hanging out attached to the station, and I go ahead and detach it because it has no reason to just be hanging out. And most of them, actually, I don't think that one does, but most of them have enough Delta V to do a safe return if they so desire uh, to Kerbin, so they're not going to be hanging out around, well not a safe and explosive return to Kerbin, but they're not hanging out in Mun orbit. So now doing our final launch, yep, this is the last one guys, get rid of the boosters now and pitching over pretty much flat and we go up to set our Apwaps to 400 kilometers, 
this stage or this module or final module is another module made by NASA and is the power and propulsion element is what it's listed on in their website and then we can go ahead and pop the fairing in the next few there it is is another one of the yellowy ones I don't know why a lot of stuff is yellow but it is and uh, this is equipped with solar panels and an engine which can kind of scoot the thing around if it needs to go places which I mean space station I don't know what it needs to do because as we know look, guys there's a lot of there's a lot of dangerous object space junk around the moon yep that's that's where that's where all the GPS satellites are right guys all the you know Starlink all gonna be around the moon obviously and I, I mean, you do need propulsion on a space station to be fair like you can't just not have it. And moon orbits are not very stable. Uh, Scott Manley has a great video about this. Uh, basically, it's because uh, the moon does not have, is not uniform in its density. So parts of it are more dense, and therefore the center of mass isn't exactly in the center. So slowly your orbits will degrade over time because parts of it are pulling harder than others. Uh, this isn't the case in KSP uh, because, you know, it just is perfect because, you know, why not? Uh, but in real life, that's why. And so you do need to do orbit changing maneuvers with uh, with space station at some point. So that'd be what that's for. And also, if, you know, in case there is some like rogue asteroid or something. And uh, we are getting set up to do our final docking of the day, which is going to be to our our station, and we're going to fully complete the station. Oh my gosh, guys, it's very exciting, isn't it? And we can see it starting to come into view now. And then we can go ahead and almost crash into it, but that's not important. Turn around and get the lounge lazy method of docking going here, which is, as everyone knows, the superior method of docking. I don't know, some people, uh, mainly one person that I would like to complain about, does not like the method. I don't understand why, it is just so much easier. I should have checked those solar panels quickly because I thought they would crash into the station because they were rotating. Maybe, maybe not. You can't be too cautious. Oh, you you've, technically you can. But that's it. That's the station done. Now we're going to pose for the cameras and call it a day. So in the next video, we're going to be launching the landers, two of the three landers. And that will be it. So thank you for watching. Until next time, please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. Until next time. And bye.